are a lot of things going on here. What? What? An otter acro? Are you kidding? Oh my god. Guys, you know what sucks besides my hair? I lost some footage. If you can just close your eyes, imagine seeing me feeding my fehedendril with my long turkey baster, some nice meaty food. And then two cleaner shrimps just kind of creeped up and then rudely ripped the food out of the coral's mouth. There you go. We all caught up. All right, so that's my problem with feeding the NPS coral. Now, one really popular method out there is to actually cut or open a two liter soda bottle and then use the top half to cup over the corals and then like squirt fruit in it, which is tried and true. I looked around the house to see what I have and your man used to be sophisticated and used to play squash. This is version one, I'm gonna try it out. One problem I can foresee is that air bubble is gonna trap at the top if I just kind of bring it up here, right? You see there's an indentation, I plan to drill right here. Uh, so air bubble is gonna trap here. So I may punch a big hole here and maybe like four smaller ones here to vent the air. Oh man, it's gonna be a tight fit. That's what she said. Let's see. Okay, um, so I probably need something a little bit larger, but this is a good first try. But for the sun coral, I think this is gonna work. Well, one interesting thing I noticed this morning is that, look in the back right there, there's my Tonga Super Nasaria snails that I've had since the 45 gallon day. I think I've had them for close to a year and a half now, if not more. Um, he, well, I guess she now, or are they asexual? I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but, she laid eggs. All right, guys, looks like we are having a little bit more success uh, compared to yesterday in terms of getting the sun coral to open up. And don't make the same mistake I did with the hand right there. You don't want to feed them a big chunk of food like that. I was trying to rip it out, but I don't want to hurt the corals so as it kind of left it. If you add too big a piece of food, you risk the food decomposing before the corals can really uh, take it in and it's it's dangerous. I have lost polyp in the past with a different fed dendril that did something similar. But uh, this one looks really healthy, so hopefully uh, it will be able to process the food. And right here we see the Tonga Super Nefarious snails. Kind of take a break from laying eggs because it smells all the good food going on here and kind of beeline towards the uh, the shield. And the good thing is that the shield held, uh, the, the snail actually climbed up but could not find the entrance. It just kinda came back down and gave up. Emily was surprised to see the silver belly rest. He's actually out every single day. He's out in the morning before like before 12 o'clock and you're just never up. Mid 12 a.m. I don't know what happened today. Somehow like she woke up early. So for, for once she saw the silver belly rest oh. and she's like, oh, I've not seen him in so long. That's me busy with making stuff. Making what? Cooking. Cooking upstairs. All right. That's why I never see. But yeah, she was uh, commenting on how large it has gotten. Kind of like the hippo tang got huge in just like two months span. I guess the silver belly rest, I never really noticed it got big because I see him pretty much almost like every day now. Three days later. The two MPS I have right now is just kind of like sitting on the sand bed. Doesn't look too natural. So I'm thinking to kind of put them all onto this piece of rock right here. Here's a closer look of the two pieces I got. This is the head dendro. Uh, I believe this is the Japanese variations. And it has a lot of small heads growing because I've been feeding it really aggressively the past three weeks ever since I got the uh, sun coral that I picked up from uh, Life of a Coral, Steven. Um, he has some fantastically healthy sun corals. Oh, chigan coral. Oh, why are you bringing a naked baby down here? Moments later. This is the NPS garden at the moment. Um, up front, we got the sun coral that is encrusting. That's why I want to like lay flat against the rock as much as I could so it could encrust onto the uh, the rock. And the Japanese fat dendro, since it's branching, doesn't really care too much where it goes. So I kind of have it perched closer to the top so it's easier to feed. Guys, yeah, so now we have two feeding apparatus. First, we got a squash ball container, which is tiny little cylinder. And then we got a Fiji water one, which is slightly bigger for a slightly bigger frags but now that I have an NPS rock I need something even larger. I look around my house and I found a nice size water bottle so we're gonna convert this and do something like this as well. So this is pretty much a two liter bottle size except the mouth is a little bit too big for my liking. So seeing how my cleaner shrimp behave I feel like just a matter of time before it dives into the entrance. So I'm probably gonna keep the cap on and just drill a smaller hole in the cap. All right guys here it is. Golden Bell Shield extra extra large golden bell shield extra extra large seems to be working well i actually took off the cap because it's a little bit too hard to maneuver the uh, long turkey baster with the cap on so i need to drill the hole a little bit larger in the cap but until then i just kept the cap off uh chum the water inside here 
and the polyp responded immediately by starting a peek out. The sun coral is responding faster and faster, which is fantastic even with the light on. Not today, Mr. Shrimp. Not today. Dude, no! No! Samsung? No. No. Bad snail. Bad snail. Uh, I got you. I got you. Bad snail. You stay over here. I'm, I want to fed you already. What's up with that? Take your eyes off them for one minute. So I was checking out the polyps, right? Sorry, there's like a small patch of algae on the glass. So it's kind of hard to see. But some of the uh, more upset looking polyps, right? Like, like that one right there. If you look carefully, I think it's actually in the process of splitting. You see that there's one extra mouth up top versus the bottom portion that's covered up by the tentacles. And just check out all these little babies popping out. Also, there's like these little tiny polyps that's like popping out from underneath. That is fantastic. Especially now that I have this, uh, uh, feeding apparatus that's perfectly covering the entire MPS, uh, MPS garden that I have here. And the sun coral is also reacting a lot faster now compared to before. Uh, it seems that the less I feed them, the slower it gets. And I think at some point, it's just gonna be a point of no return. So I think the gum zhong zhao extra, extra large has been working fantastically well. I'm super happy with this super simple DIY build. I'm gonna check back in a few days and uh, yeah. Three days later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I haven't talked to you guys in this setting for a very, very long time because of the pandemic. Well, today, whew, for the first time, I'm actually gonna go out, hit up a fish store to meet up with a local reefer, Lin, to swap some corals. And next to me is my trusty frag cooler. We've got the Belly Mini Max Carpet and Enemy. This is a really small guy, but this guy happens to land on a rock that can remove really easily, so we got that going. And then we have one of my favorite protectors. This is the one with the orange rim with the mint green center. I'm not quite sure if there's a name for it yet, although it's gaining popularity, so we will see. And it's like every single time I show you guys a frag cooler, there's more new stickers on it, which is fantastic. I love you guys. Let's get to House of Tropicals. Oh man, here we go. I didn't realize I miss it so much. Actually going to a fish store. Huh. Oh, okay. Still a lot of people in the store. I'm gonna get my stuff and get out. Moments later. All right, guys, done. Didn't want to stay in there too long because, dude, there, there are quite a few people in there. Came back out, met of Lynn, and Lynn somehow gave me this huge box right here. I was expecting maybe like two, three corals. I'm not sure what's going on in here. She said that there's like some starter stuff in there. Once again, thank you so much, Lynn, and also your awesome friend. This pack. All right, this is really thoughtful, actually. Uh, we're local, I was not expecting that. What? All right, looks like Lynn actually included a mushroom box for me uh, because one of the corals in here is actually a loose letter. This is super, super thoughtful. And I remember seeing her post on Facebook actually asking if anybody local could 3D print some of these uh, mushroom cage. So Lynn, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is really, really generous. And here we got her awesome, awesome sticker, Lean Reef Nerd. You are so not a nerd. All right, let's see what's going on. Dude, this is, there's a, there are a lot of things going on here. What? I'm only expecting two sun corals and a letter in here, but I think she, she sent over a lot of stuff. So there's some type of soas here. What? Monty Pork Cap. Okay, this guy should be okay. That other acro, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of nervous about, but let's see how we do. This looks like a Monty Digitata, right? Looks like a forest fire or a bubble gum. Looks like a forest fire, actually. Dude, what? I was not expecting to go SPS for another like year. I guess we're gonna try a little bit early. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Are you kidding, Lynn? I really don't know what this is, but this looks really expensive, actually. I'm getting a little nervous now. An otter acro, are you kidding? Oh my God. All right, so this is one of the coral that I'm expecting, the black sun coral. She had this in her system, but then she, I think she was just tired of feeding it. And she saw that I'm doing an MPS. So was, she was like, oh, why do you, do you want this? And I was like, oh yeah, of course. Oh, here it is. This is the soft coral that I've been looking high and low for. This is the Japanese pink nepheus. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is like a nice rich pink under white light and it actually has some like really nice uh, white pattern on the body itself. I'm gonna explain a little bit more after it has a chance to really settle in. And she saw my post on my local reef club Walmart. So she said that one of her friend out west was actually gonna send this to her to try. She has one already, but she wanna try another one, different flow. But she saw my post and was like, hey, why don't you have this first? And she's part of this uh, Northern Virginia coral by cell trait group um, and the stuff that she pulls up just shows you that she's like a super super generous person so thank you thank you for letting me try this one and this is the other sun corals I believe this is a brown one uh, that Lynn upon hearing that I'm doing MPS 
uh, asked if I wanted to try it. So here it is. Thank you so much, Lynn. You're way more than generous. I hope in the future I will be successful in terms of growing out corals and then I'll return the favor as well and also pay it forward like what you're doing so much that I see locally. Let's get these corals into the system and acclimate it. Corals from Lynn has one night to acclimate to the tank. Let's take a slightly closer look. So first of all, we have a Mondi cap and this looked like the StarTech one with the yellow polyp. Looks beautiful and I have to think about placement. This time around, I'm probably going to place it near the back or lower down so that it does not run the risk of shading on the corals, but that's a beautiful, beautiful morph. Over here, I think it's like a... So, uh, never mind. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it. It starts with C, but it looks really, really beautiful. Interesting growth formation. And right back there, we have a nice letter. I've been a big fan of letter recently, so that is fantastic. Over here, we have two different acros. I'm slightly nervous about simply because I've not had the best track record for acroporas. But these days, I do have the Alcatronic to keep an eye on Alcalantes. Hopefully, they'll do well. Back there, we do have what I believe is a forest fire digitata that I'm a little bit more confident in because I have had luck with Manipora, so that should be okay. Right in the middle, I'm kind of excited about that one. Although also kind of nervous, that looks like a, is it a Millipora? It looks kind of hairy as well, a really nice bright tip. That is beautiful. I wish it would do well in my tank, so we will see. Over here, we have a nice polyp of Zoa. It has not fully opened yet, so I'm not quite sure what it is, but whatever I can see right now, looks really bright. Looks like a yellow or green skirt with a bright pink center. So that's gonna be awesome, awesome. And back there, we have supposedly one black uh, sun polyp and then uh, one brown one as well. And last night, they actually to open up the polyps and one at least that one did and the polyp looks black it looks really really awesome i'm gonna be removing these guys from the frag plug and then planting them onto this mps island i think they'll make really nice contrast another coral i'm super excited about is actually what's in the uh, shroom cage i was 3d printed locally and that is the kojiwada pink nipheus uh, this is a really really unique corals that <laughs> actually unique corals carry them but in our case, we got it from out west. Uh, one of Lynn's friends hooked it up. And it's kind of hard to see because I pushed the cage to a lower flow part of the tank so that it has a chance to properly uh, grow onto the frag plug before I move it to the mangrove tank because I believe that coral deserve to be viewed up close and under more white light compared to blue. It has some really, really nice details. I say really, really a lot, huh? Another really cool thing is that you've seen this uh, fat dandro a little bit earlier in this video and it has only been a week, but look at how the children polyps have grown since then. They grow really fast. And again, I keep seeing like fat dandros and probably sun coral as well, even though I don't have too much experience with them. Uh, they really show how much effort you put into them. The more effort you put into them, the more they reward you just like this. And Hopefully I'll see the similar kind of growth to these new corals that I've gotten from Lynn once again. Thank you, Lynn. You're awesome. All right, Reefers, looks like I got a whole day ahead of me gluing these frags into their final destination. I actually have a couple developing stories that's gonna be amazing to share. And if you don't wanna miss it, be sure to subscribe to this channel so when I post them, you know. With that said though, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 for the game Tang actually went cloudy two times now, ever since uh, we did the whole Emily doing uh, the Lysol spray. I think maybe it's actually things spawning. Nobody tower.